And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and here in the Dice Tower we like to talk about the hot, popular games, but we also want to spotlight games from around the world. Recently, I went to a small convention in China and was taught this game here, Board Game Chess of Quinn Style. It is a two-player abstract strategy game, although it can go to more if you buy multiple sets of it, that is a mixture of chess, uh, Chinese chess, and maybe a few other abstract strategy style games. In this, you have a bunch of pieces and your goal is to get sev several of them to your opponent's side of the board. Capturing pieces is certainly possible, but that's not necessarily the point of the game. Here is the point of the game. Each player is going to have a whole pile of pieces and you're going to start the board with your commanders in these positions. And the rest of the pieces are in front of you. Now the goal of this game is to get four points. And you'll get a point by having any of your pieces land on your opponent's line. You'll then turn them sideways to show that. If your piece has captured another piece, in this game you can land another piece and capture it, then that's worth two points. So I would basically win like this. One, two, three, four. So that's how you're going to win the game. You can capture other people's pieces, and you have your commander here, which is where you start. On a player's turn, you have two different options. You can take any piece you want and place it in any space adjacent to your commander. And then after that, you can place it adjacent to any piece that you already have on the board. So as you get more pieces, you can move farther and closer to your opponent. Uh, but you have to have an unbroken line back to your commander. If it's broken, then I can only place around here. The first player on their first turn can only place in the first line. That's kind of an, an equalizer. Or, instead of placing a piece, you can pick one of your pieces and move and or attack based on what that piece does. The commander can move one space in any direction. So pretty easy for him to move around. The swordsman can go two spaces forward or to the right or left, one or two spaces, or they can retreat one. Swordsmen don't like to retreat too much. The Lancer can go even farther than that, but they can only go forward, three up to three spaces, moving pretty far forward, or they can retreat diagonally backwards one in any direction. The Barbarian is like a lesser commander. They can go to the side or forward one, and they can retreat one, but you have more Barbarians that you can throw on the board. The assassin attacks diagonally two, so it can slide two in different directions forward, or it can move back one space diagonally, like thus. The knight is very similar to the knight in chess, where it can move like that, like a knight, or it can go backwards two spaces when moving it. So the knight can't move like a knight backwards, but forwards or to the side, it can move like a knight in chess. The archer can move one space, in any direction orthogonally, or it can attack an enemy piece that is two, three, or four away by shooting them essentially and landing on them. The mango now can move one space to the side or one space backwards. It can capture any piece in any straight distance away from it, so it could capture this knight here if there's another piece in between them. So if there's no piece in between them, the mango now can't capture it, but there is. You can jump basically forward as far as you want. There's also a couple defensive pieces here. We have the, the guard, who the guard can be captured, but the four spaces next to the guard cannot be. So if you want to take those out, you have to get the guard first. Guards cannot guard another guard. Then there's also a shield. A shield can't be attacked basically from the front. So it can't be attacked from here, here, or here, this triangle like this with the exception of the mango nail can take it if there's a piece in between them. So that's pretty much how you play. There are also rules for two versus two. You can get a set with another two colors in it to play against somebody else. And that's essentially how you play the game. 
The pieces themselves are really nice plastic pieces. They stack well. The biggest problem with the pieces is that it's going to be hard to necessarily tell what they do. It has the Chinese, the English here with a symbol, and you can see it pretty closely when you look this closely, but you're going to have to look at the board a lot, and I think dry brushing the top of these is going to be pretty critical if you're going to want to keep the game. Component-wise, other than that, though, all the pieces come like this, and you slide them into these boxes, so that's really nice. The game also comes with two timers in case you want to make sure people move faster on their turns, and it comes with these bags where you can put the pieces in them. They're really nice cloth bags. Everything fits very nicely in this box. I mean, the whole production itself is really nicely done. Now, the game is in Chinese. I have an English translation, which is okay. In this case, I was taught the game by the designer of it. I mean, and once you know the basic rules, even if you don't understand it, you can still pretty much follow the diagrams in here as to how the pieces move. But I suspect that a lot of people will be watching this video to see how the game works. There's a few other rules. If your commander is captured, the closest piece of yours becomes the commander, so you switch the commander piece with that piece. If two pieces land on a third piece, then the, the then one of the the, the the one piece is removed and returned to its its owner, so you can get a piece back if you land on top of your opponent's pieces. So there's a few things like that. Some of the pieces there's one of, some there's two of, there's a few that there's three of. The game is really intriguing to me. I, I first played it and instantly I found myself in this zone, which is kind of similar to the zone that I might fall into if I played chess or any of these games where I'm like thinking, wow, the amount of choices here. Which piece will I put on the board? Once the pieces are on the board, do I keep adding more pieces? Because the more pieces you have on the board, you're stronger than your opponent, kind of. At the same time, if you just add pieces and never do anything, your opponent can quick drop some pieces in and win. That catapult is always really dangerous sitting across the board. So if someone opponent will move a piece in, so then you move a piece in there, go capture that one, and I'll capture you type thing. So there's some back and forth there, but it's kind of this move to your opponent's line. It's a mix of some of my abstract strategy games I like. Kamisato, a game in which you're trying to get to your opponent's end line. It has a bit of that in it. The Duke, where you get to put pieces here, but there's no randomness. You pick the pieces that you go out. And while I think the Barbarian maybe isn't the strongest piece, sometimes it's the right piece for the job. And then also, when you put out your Archer, your Lancers, which can move forward really quickly, the Lancers are a great, great way to score those points on the other person's side. I haven't played this with four players. I'm not even sure I really want to. I, I really like the one versus one aspect of it. But I think if you like chess or Chinese chess, this is kind of a just a different type of game in that category. Uh, I thought it was a unique, interesting thing. It looks cool. And it's not just, hey, here's chess, but the pieces move differently. The pieces actually move very similarly to chess. But what makes this game unique is that this kind of forward movement, a bit of logistics, because you want to have your stuff connected to your commander, capturing the other people, but kind of how do you go about doing that? Just so, some really neat aspects to this. If you can find a copy of this, or if you're in China, you definitely want to see if you can get a copy of this for sure. This is an interesting game that I thought, you know, there's a gazillion abstract games that are made all the time. This one felt different and yet somewhat familiar at the same time. And I enjoyed it. So that's Board Game Chess of Quinn. Dice Tower Judgment approved. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.